بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علی سیدنا مولانا حبیب اللہ العالمین ابو القاسم المصطفی محمد اللهم صلی علی محمد و علی محمد و عجل فرجہ السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ السلام علیکم Inshallah to those who are tuning in live, to those who are listening um, later on, welcome to the Monthly Reflections podcast. Um, so good to have you join if you're listening live or if you're coming later. We thank you so much for making time in these nights for these important discussions. And Alhamdulillah, today we are joined by a special guest who I'm so excited that he has accepted to come on the podcast. Alhamdulillah, uh, Sayyid Hassan Rizvi um, from over the States. Where is he originally from? Is it New Jersey? I don't know. We'll find out. Orlando, maybe. I don't know. But um, Sayyid Hassan, thank you so much for joining. I f- yes, and we'll get going, inshallah. To those of you joining, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Thanks for joining for a different time as well. Um, anything for Sayyid Hassan, honestly. <laughs> so let's see. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullah. Abbas, what's going on, man? Yes, Sayyid. Is there a delay? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Mashallah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, not bad, man. It's been a while. How's everything? Oh, it's been a while. I can't believe we've not actually met. This feels almost criminal at this point in our relationship. <laughs> you know, I was actually just thinking today. I'm like, you know, I, I have to free up some time and I have to take a trip to the UK and then meet everybody, especially you and some of the other brothers, inshallah. So, by the way, many, many people have said to say salam to you. Um, I can't mention all their names, but just take a Jimmy and Salam from the Shabab in London, okay? Uh, from all. Alaikum Salam, Jimmy and. I know. I, I'm so confused. What time is it where you are, by the way? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, just yeah, just past six p.m. right now. So Maghrib will be in about one hour. Where are you? What what state? Which which place? Uh, in Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. Ah, mashallah. Okay, so you're on that side, aren't you? Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Um, so it's like how long? Pretty much the farthest you can go in terms of U.S. time, I think. Right? Maybe is there one more zone? Yeah, I, I think that's a, I was it's... really challenging myself with this one because you guys, I think it's MST, so it's a different area. So alhamdulillah. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for joining the podcast. Really, really grateful. Alhamdulillah, uh, that's great. We're no, having Layla to the here invited, right now. Man. No, no, Hamza. Yeah, it's right now, later, the, the, yeah. Are you at the center right now? Which one are you at? In Haydri, in Haydri Islamic Center. Shout out to Haydri. Um, Haydri. Salam to everybody at Haydri. <laughs> Alaikum salam. Right now, they're doing Dua Joshan. So um, I thought to myself, uh, what can incre- improve okay, so the Tawab? Except, except you. <laughs> Astaghfirullah. No way, man. Allah. Yeah, Haydri is a great. You know, they've got a brand new center here. And so... You know how the modern, the center is changing because of the needs of the community are changing quite, quite differently. So this center, I mean, yeah. has got a games room, a ball pit, a, a room for toddlers and kids. They're building sports halls all within the masjid. And this is, I think, the, oh. the way the community has changed now than it was before. Have you got that in America as well? Um, so I know centers are trying to, trying to implement that. I don't know how many actually have all of those things where uh, they have like separate rooms. I've been at one center that has like a separate kids room i suppose um and i know that people who are building centers now they're trying to plan for that but i, I can't honestly say that i've been to one that has everything that you're mentioning right now um i, I yeah i think they're trying it's amazing Sad. honestly because like the kids all show up and they just are excited to go to the mosque and you don't get that feeling in that young age except with these kind of incentives you know um yeah. it's beautiful no, alhamdulillah. I'm, I'm happy to hear they have all that kind of setup it's really good yeah, so when you come, not only they'll have you read, they'll have you play pool as well and take on the kids and play table tennis and then they'll play FIFA and they'll judge you properly. <laughs> they'll judge me properly? Though I'm going to have to beat them properly then. <laughs> That's what I say. I say, just because you think we're shayukh, we're not going to go easy on you. Like, don't think that yeah. for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so right now it's obviously Laytul Qadr, one of the nights of Qadr here of A'mal in the UK. What's the plan for you? I mean, have you been doing a'mal over in Phoenix? You've been traveling. How's the nights of du'a been? How's Shah Ramadan been for you? Uh, Ramadan's been interesting. So the first half, I was uh, in Orlando, right? That's where I normally reside. Um, that's where I serve. So I was there for the first half. Uh, I was supposed to travel. Plans didn't go right. So I was, I was still in Orlando, which is fine. So I spent time with some of the community members there. 
Uh, there was obviously scholars who were visiting, so I spent some time with them. Uh, and then, yeah, so I've been here since, and, and Phoenix, I've been here since last, actually it's been, yeah, just just over a week now. So last Thursday I came. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, obviously we had our first night of Qadr tonight, uh, will be the uh, second one. And over here, this, so the community I'm with is, um, it's a little bit smaller. It's growing on nights of Qadr, as I guess most communities, you know, usually that's the case. Um, yeah. So I think in the actual center, you know, they don't do the full A'mal. They've been doing just some of the basics, and then people usually go home and do, I guess, the majority on their own. And tonight, I, I, I'm assuming they'll probably do a bit more since it's a Friday night. And, and then, of course, on the 23rd, I don't know. I mean, usually most centers that I'm used to, they'll have minimal ones for 19th and 21st. And then 23rd, people, if it's a week, you know, it's on a weeknight towards a weekday, they'll take off, like, for this, for our say, uh, case, it would be Monday night, right? I don't know what the right. community is doing over here, but... Um, so we, uh, I've been pretty much just kind of doing things on my own because uh, this community is more, uh, it's just an Arabic community, more uh, Arab. So they're kind of doing their own style. I'm also, I'm staying in an apartment that's part of the center. So I just came back. I hung out with a few brothers. We talked a little bit uh, about some stuff mm -hmm. and then everybody kind of split their own ways and I did a basic Armal on my own. Yeah. Well, in some ways, I mean, you know how busy you can get in Shah Ramadan. It's nice that you get to do your Armal, your du'as, you know, I guess there's a, there's a beauty in that serenity. You know, um, yeah, I think I don't know if it was maybe around last time when um, we had the uh, we were with you and um, Sheikh Hassan Roshendil and we were talking about I think the same issues about yeah you know this idea we've been developing over time and now it's a standard sort of cultural community practice where everybody gets together and that's what we look forward to get the best reciters um, almost like I don't want to call it a concert because then I'm going to get canceled but <laughs> you know what I mean like we want this like group experience and yeah. I mean, I understand the benefit of that, but uh, as we were talking about last year, but I think there's a value in trying to do at least something on your own and really connecting on your own. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I personally like that. And it gives me that time to, that I want to, to connect. And because, you know, a lot of times people, I think when they do this, A'mal, you know, they'll say, you know, if it wasn't in the center, like happening in public or in the community, I wouldn't do it at home. I said, yeah, right. well, that's a point of reflection, which is going to lead into our topic, I suppose. Right. But like that shows you, okay, well, maybe then this is a handicap that we have to kind of get rid of then because that is not letting us build up our own individual kind of spiritual growth. Maybe, I don't know. Since we spoke, my opinions changed a little bit on this. So when we spoke, I was like, and I still have to some degree about we need to have dua in solitude and, and all of those things. But now, I, especially today, when I came to the center and we're doing dua joshua together, I feel the warmth of the hive a little bit more than I used to. Maybe it's my own personal journey, mm. but I, I feel like, the communal aspect of du'a, it does create something which is palpable and, and, and uh, you know, in front of you. It, it, you can taste it. And I think that feeling is encouraging for someone when they're a bit low. As long as they're getting their alone time, I think there's great value in communal du'a. And I didn't used to think that. I used to, like, really dislike it. But now I'm really warming to it. I really am. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I can't disagree with what you said. And I think especially maybe post-COVID too. I think that's obviously another variable we have to consider because people sure. have been away from their their friends and family and, and you know the community for so long that now I think reciting together, and I've been seeing this in a lot of centers, they've been posting up, it's so nice to finally you know be back and kind of normalize yeah. everything. Uh, no dua with masks on, for example, you know, stuff like that. Like these little <laughs> things I think have an effect. Right. So, yeah, I see what you're saying. But I, I think if, if somebody can maybe balance it to some degree and then you yeah. know, have that time for intimate dua and then, yeah, OK, maybe a few things in public. Yeah, I, I suppose that's a good way to moderate. Balance is the best way of saying it. You know, the example they give about you can't look at spirituality the way where you believe you should be recluse from society, like some mystic somewhere who's not involved. You have to do your whole. That example, I think, is not that practical because in real life, we don't have mountains to hide away from in the business of modern life. But the you got nothing stand, in the UK, some... no mountains? No, for London, you've got to really drive outside to get there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like you, you have to, you know, you're like, you, you have to really change that example for today where it's be in your room or in your apartment or in your house rather than uh, a recluse. But I think nowadays, because of what you mentioned, we, we value the communal aspect a little bit more when, when it was lacking. In the same way, maybe I value the solitude more when it was lacking in, in my, you know, my personal regime. So I think it's about balance. That's probably right. But even that, you know, sometimes giving the idea of balance, what does actual balance mean? Because, you know, it's a cliche answer we all jump to. Uh, and, I, yeah, I mean, I think here it's tough, right? Because 
I mean, you know, when people give the word balance, like obviously we're supposed to be balanced you know, and moderate, but it's always, it always comes back like, okay, do we really want to follow what, what seemingly is the practice of the Ashab and the Aima in the past where it does seem like it was an individual practice. It doesn't seem like it's the same way that you and I are used to now in our communities. Like, yeah. is that the real thing? Like, okay, well, balance and moderation means to go back to that thing. Uh, or is that, no, things have changed now. And because our communities, we don't, we're not living in Islamic civilizations. Our communities, we are deprived of that communal feel. So maybe this is a way of making up for it. I mean, I, I think, yeah, I'm not like super either way, but I think, the reason I think I, I emphasize a lot for myself and for others on the personal aspect is because obviously the community part is there. It seems like what yeah. everybody has missed out and forgotten is a, is a private personal one. So I think maybe that's why I end up spending so much time focusing on that. At least telling people that don't forget that part too. Don't just, you know, stay up at the center the whole night. And then or yeah. even if you're going to be at the center with the you know, community dua, when there's times like there's little breaks for food or chai or whatever, you know, maybe take an extra five minutes and read an extra line on your own or read a, a short dua that nobody else is going to do, something like that, or even a two rakat sadas. You know, even that, I think, maybe may have make up for those, uh, make up for what we're talking about. Maybe, I don't know. Something you mentioned earlier, which almost preempts this point, is um, people are used to or relying upon these programs to fill that spiritual gap, which the society simply does not offer you. Um, and I don't want to get into modernity and, and don't go there, say it now, but I'm just saying, in yeah, current society, oh, no, no. <laughs> it's not at all a essential factor of success or of, or of your lifestyle to have a spiritual um, regime or routine. So maybe, you know, that's true. Like, because we don't have it, we get it from here. But also, if you say to someone, do this amal at home, a lot of people don't know how to cultivate in themselves that, that vibe of spirituality or reflection to sit still with yourself to do it. Yeah. Um, what, what is, did, did we lose the ability to reflect at some point? What, what happened that it's so hard just to sit and talk to God in a busy life? Um, yes, <laughs> the answer is yes. We, we have lost the ability. It's declined over time. Again, I don't want to sound like the, the old fart, but uh, obviously I'm older than mo you know, most people. I'm sure most of your viewers and everything. So I'm from a generation where I still remember my home phone number. I still have phone numbers memorized. Uh, I can get to certain places without the use of a GPS. Uh, nowadays, again, same sort of point that I think people are, right, uh, are cognizant of, but they, don't, they just don't care, is that our yeah. attention span, our ability to engage in proper cognition, or more importantly, metacognition, has been completely obliterated because of the technology, especially like social media. We, we don't have that same solitude and quietness and and some people would call awkwardness. We're not used to that. And I mean, I'm sure like people right now, even ones who, let's say they're listening right now at some point, yeah, I'm sure people would like, I mean, you know, you're used to this. You do this all the time. You've been doing it nightly. People are probably coming in. They listen for like a few seconds or a minute and then they jump out and then they listen to something else. They're just, uh, well, I'm trying to think of what animal, like, like, uh, what, what animal is that? Um, those ones are just I like will running not about all over the place. In the, in the objectification of any of my viewers, they're all angels. Thanks for oh following. God. Please share my yeah. perspective podcast with all of your friends, inshallah. I pre say it more, but I appreciate you. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> How profane. So I'll be, the, I'll be the bad guy here, no problem. So, and actually, I look like I, the bad I, guy I, too. I'm just noticing, like, the. Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, yeah. The, I don't know. I guess just the no, the the lighting too. Yeah, so the 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 internet here is pretty bad. Unfortunately, it's like satellite internet, and I think the lighting that I chose is probably like really bad. It, You've like, got real you know, like, fun, uh, vibe right now. Have you seen the Batman, the new one with Robert Pattinson? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know how he does the the black eye makeup. That's what it looks like right now. So it's kind. I mean, it's kind of yeah. cool, a little brooding, but yeah, I'll stick with it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So back to the point. Um, so look. With the sort of rise of the millennial generation and now Generation Z and as we're going forward, because everything's at our fingertips, again, I'm, I'm saying it, everybody knows it, but they don't, I don't think they fully understand how much more we were able to memorize uh, back then, like in, in, when I was yeah. growing up, how much more we had available in our mindset. Like we have to be able to, to dump off. We have to be able to have this, uh, I think in psychology, they call it unloading. We don't right. have that anymore. We don't have an ability to unload. Um, like just 
you know, sitting around just being quiet for a little while. People, we don't have that because again, everybody knows the minute, even in a lecture, in the middle of a lecture, I, I mean, you've lectured, you know, people are there. Even if you're the best speaker, there's going to be some point where they're going to tune out for a second and they have to check their notifications. They have to do that. So that's the way that they've unloaded. Their unloading is yeah. not within, it's without. And that's a big problem because when you're unloading without, to, you know, to some degree, that's a good thing. Like we're supposed to reflect on signs outside, but that's not what's happening when we're you know, engaging in this sort of behavior. Um, so in that sense, it's not good. And even the internal reflection is completely gone because now uh, if you ask the average Muslim or average person, but Muslim specifically, you know, we know tafakkur and tadabbur uh, and tadhakur, right? Reflection, contemplation, uh, whatever you want to translate it as, deliberation. These are all great. Like, okay, how do you actually do it? I guarantee you, ask the majority of people, like, heck, if you ask scholars, I don't know if they can give you a good answer. Like, the, mm -hmm. you know, d deeply think about something. Like, what do you mean deeply think? Like, it's like asking, you know, when we're outside, you know, since we, we talked about Batman, I'll talk about Superman. It's like saying, how does Superman fly faster? Like, what is he doing to fly faster? He's just like, oh, like, like you know, squeeze. Like, what is he doing to make him fly faster, right? Um, that, like, that's sort of the idea. How do you, how do you contemplate? really contemplate harder it's a, it's a tough thing for most people to think about i think let's give it like an actual example to make it easier so these are the nights of dua of, of like the qadr we have so many du'as recommended and you know dua joshni kabir and Hamza thamari and even the shorter <laughs> ones okay there's a way of doing it which is the opposite of what we want which is without any contemplation it's yeah and it's a routine you do it you go and it makes no change for your life and next year comes along and it's the same sins you're speaking to god about and we, we don't want that if we inject pondering or to or to double these things to that dua it changes i think what you do before the dua how you approach it and even after dua how you look back on it so maybe you can make it clear for us before we begin dua what's pondering before what's pondering during and, and what's what's the role of it and after as well yeah awesome so using those three terms it's good to at least let's you know let's define our terms too because if we've seen this it's all in the quran right you have tafakkur you have tadabbur uh, and um, you have tazakur. Yeah. Yeah, asant. I should probably do a different, different order, but khair. So now, everybody, in most translations, you're going to see the word contemplation or deliberation. Obviously, that's not mm -hmm. going to help anybody. Like, well, what is that? Contemplation, reflection, deliberation, whatever. Okay. So the ulama in various backgrounds, they, they differ a little bit. Like, if we're talking about the, the average mutakallim, they'll just say, think about the signs of God. Or they think, think about the signs of the world, which is one stage, definitely. If you pose the same question to the philosophers or somebody involved in metaphysics, it'll take, let's say, literally a deeper meaning, a deeper meaning, pun intended, obviously. And mm -hmm. then if you talk to the Arafa, then it's a whole, it takes a whole different meaning altogether. It's, an, it's so a different level. I want to try to, <laughs> yeah, uh, because normally when we're even thinking about thinking, we're jumping to the mind right away. What's going on behind you? Somebody passing you chai or you got some samosas no, no, ready no. for you? They, they just finished one of the du'as, so that's fine. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay. The if you need to stop and go, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I finished my part and, and I, you know, wanted to know what to do next. That's why I had you on. <laughs> so, I've done that. Yeah. So, yeah. we have so different experts, the way different that... dimensions to the action, right? Yeah. So, I, wanted to, I don't want to go into all those that ikhtilafat, right? Because that might overcomplicate things. If we have time, maybe we'll jump into that. But let's stick with, I think, what's good for most of us to understand. Say, okay, let's talk about low or high or these kind of thing, ideas as a process. All of us have thoughts in our mind. It's very obvious. Um, and these thoughts can be different things. You can talk about fikr, which is like maybe thought or thinking to a low level. And then you have this idea of a khatira or khawatir. And these are usually unconscious or subconscious thoughts, meaning you and I right now, stuff is popping in our head and we don't, we're not really active in that process, right? It's something popping in my head right now, like, oh, uh, well, who's talking? You know, I heard some sound randomly or I'm thinking about food or whatever it is. It's not me consciously, actively with my own free will engaging in an active process. These other things, meaning tafakkur, tadabur, and tadakkur, these are active processes. So it's not just okay. something that just happens to us. It's something that we have to use our free will to actively engage in. Okay, so that's one thing. Now we're talking about, okay, well, what is it? What are we actually doing here? So the way that some ulama say is tafakkur and tadabbur are active processes. And the conclusion from these, there are two different styles. The conclusion should be tadakkur. Like that should be the end result. Okay, okay. Well, okay. let's start with one by one then. Tafakkur is this. Tafakkur, what some ulama say is, first, is a, is a person, I think another 
translation that I'll give is that's maybe a bit more precise is analyzing or analysis or critical and a critical anal, uh, analysis, examining things in as many variables as you can. So what a person has to do is they take a look at their own thoughts and whatever known information that they have, and they have a question that they pose to themselves, or maybe they even think about what question that they need to think about, and they start attacking it from all different sides, right? So like, as you just said yourself, like, okay, dua, I know is something that's good. That's known information to me. It's something that we recite, and it's usually in Arabic that I'm reciting. Okay, that's also known information to me. I'm supposed to be connecting with God. That's known information. So now, like, there's other questions that can come alongside that I don't know the answer. Like, okay, well, how do I actually connect with God to the dua? That's an unknown to me. Sure. Um, do I do it in English or Arabic? That's an unknown to me. Maybe I don't know. Um, and then from there, you can spring off in a whole bunch of different discussions. Because if you try to ask the question about how do I connect in God and do I recite it in English or Arabic? Well, you have to say, okay, well, does Arabic have any intrinsic spiritual value? Okay, that's going to branch off into a whole set of other questions as well too, right? Okay, it may have value. If it has value, does that mean I need to recite in Arabic then? Because if it does have value, maybe reciting in Arabic is the ideal. Well, somebody might yeah. say, okay, but I don't, I don't have that Arabic intrinsic value. So now I have to default to go back to English. Like, okay, fine. If I've already said that Arabic has this intrinsic value and I don't know it, maybe does, do I have to listen to somebody recite the Arabic and then watch a PowerPoint of English? Is that going to be enough value? So you can mm. see it. This is like you know, opening up like a rabbit's hole. Um, for those of us who have like very kind of, let's say, ADHD personalities who are used to in the middle of research or asking a question, you jump into multi-tabs right, on, on your browser. That's basically kind of what yeah. you're doing is you have one simple, one idea or point and then you're kind of multi-tabbing your way to kind of figuring out what's happening here. You're getting to the depth of the question. You're taking all your known information and trying to rearrange whatever's possible, opening up different variables, looking at it from different sides to see if you can offer an answer to the question or even just come to new questions that you haven't thought of before. So, you know, kind of summarizing it, it's taking the knowns, understanding that maybe you're jumping to an unknown and hopefully getting to a known after that. You take what information you already have with you, you look at it from different angles, maybe add in a unknown variable, open up new questions, or at least try to get to an answer to something that was unknown to you before. So that is how some ulama talk about tafakkur. And I gave you, so in the way of dua, that's one way that a person can approach it there too. Even outside of dua, there's another way that you can uh, use it in terms of, let's say, moral and akhlaqi questions. And ways that I guess I guarantee you that most people haven't thought about before. So let's say, inshallah, I come to the UK. Uh, what's the um, go-to place for, for pizza? Where would you go? I would bring you to South London to Norbury to take you to probably get um, Top's Pizza or Hamas Pizza, for sure. Okay. Like, is, does it, I don't know, have you been to New York or anything? <laughs> is it, is it going to line up with our pizza over here? Okay, no. It won't. <laughs> okay. But it's the best, it's, it's the best right. you'll get here. <laughs> okay. Is it halal or no? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's the end of the podcast. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Halal. No, I mean, look, because there might be a, a great pizza place, but it may not be halal, for example, right? So that's a variable to consider. Halal, okay, halal. Okay, so now somebody might say, look, we have to go to a pizza place. So I have to consider, well, there's a pizza place that's really good, like, meaning they have really good pizza. So we can do the veggie pizza, whatever, or cheese pizza, or margarita, whatever it is, but it's not halal. So you have to say, okay, well, what if I want good halal pizza? Like, okay, there's a good halal spot, so we can get pepperoni or meat lovers, whatever. But the actual quality of the stuff is not as good as that non-halal place. Like, okay, well, now we got to figure out what to do. So, and especially now, you're going to host me, right? So you have to take care of me as your guest, and you want to make sure you give everybody in the UK, you know, I get a good impression. So that, you know, you might not think of it that way, but that's actually a, a, a moral akhlaqi question. When we are actually hosting people, we want to make sure we take care of them as best as possible. And normally we say, okay, I want to give them the best. I give them the best experience. So what do I do? Do I take them to a non-halal spot? which is really going to be great food, but now I'm leaving aside some other variables. If I go to a halal spot, now I'm treating them to halal food, which is great. At the same time, I'm giving business to Muslim owners, which is also a good yeah. thing to do, but I'm not giving them the best quality pizza in that sense. Like, so these are actual things to consider. Or let's go so even what, deeper. What, what, let's, yeah, yeah go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to suggest the way of no, no, this one, not, got, no, just to kind of take stock of where we are so far, because people are joining in characteristically, like yeah. you said. So, we want to contemplate every variable associated with a particular action. That's our aim. And we're doing so in order to maybe unlock dimensions which would not be there upon the apparent. Is that, is that a fair way of concluding? Yeah, very good summary, yeah. 
but then the problem is how deep do we go until we have itma'anan of doing anything? Because I don't want to become too sophist. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. So let's go. Uh, yeah, so before we jump back to the pizza thing. So let's go to at least what, what the riwayat say, right? Um, and I, I'm still fasting, so I have to be careful which riwayat I mention, right? Uh, and I have to be what careful is attributed not to pizza in front of you because there's food everywhere. So I'll, I'll be even more careful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at Haydari, are they actually going to serve pizza? Honestly. Hey, hey, hey the, shout out to Haydri. I'm not just saying it because they help me out a lot. These guys serve you everything. They're, they're pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I, I can't get, wait to check it out. Pizza, I've, had, I've had pizza here, actually. For a whole program. Oh. It's delicious. Yeah. Oh. Huh? From nice. okay. the place right. I would so, take you, ironically. Anyway, yeah? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Now, now I can't wait. No. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So, we're talking about limits now. Like, right. Let's go to, to the two extremes. So I want to go to the lowest and then the, 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 yeah, the two borders that we have to, say, uh, to set for ourselves. So in Riwayat, at least, uh, what's mentioned is that, look, we're supposed to do tafakkur. We know that there's recommendations. You know, one night of tafakkur is better than a night in Ibadah, right? That, that's what some Riwayats say. Then they say, no, it's better than a month. Then they say, no, it's better than a year of worship. No, they say it's better than 60 years. No, it's better than 70 years. So already you see that, look, there's different levels of this too, right? I mean, so we all know this. I mean, it's not like something surprising to everybody that's listening. We all know contemplation, tafakkur specifically, analyzing is good. Like, okay, so what is that limit, that top level limit? So most of the say, look, there's pretty much the only limit that exists is tafakkur fi vatillah, according to the riwayat. You can't contemplate and deeply think and analyze the essence of Allah. That's it. You can think about God's qualities, his sifat. Think about his names, think about his qudra, his power, think about his love, his mercy, compassion, his forgiveness. Uh, his creation, think about all of that. Analyze all of that. Don't even try to think about his essence. You do that, Lace then the they... The, 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 uh, some, but the Rewayat are very harsh. They'll say that you will be, you'll obliterate yourself, you'll destroy yourself. And to give people a taste of this, there have been, there's a documentary out there where mathematicians have tried to jump into the concept of infinity and really find out what that means. It's one of the most mysterious ideas. You know, you can talk to mm-hmm. any atheist and empiricist that you want, say, look, you empiricists and physicalists, uh, you can't do anything without math, right? Like, yeah, okay. Math requires the concept of infinity. You can't escape that. Okay. You try to explain the concept of infinity. You can't do it. When mathematicians have tried to do that, they have gotten lost. There have been studies, and this documentary shows mathematicians who have studied infinity, and they've ended up committing suicide because they've, gotten so, they've gone insane. So wow. it's a very, very deep thing. Like, Mathematical infinity can't be handled. Think about the you know, most perfect of the perfect, right? Allah. So obviously we can't think about that extreme perfection. Now we say, okay, let's go to the other extreme too. In the modern age, I know you didn't want to talk about it, but at least let me talk about the other extreme. The other extreme right now is people who are into this meditation and contemplation and you know, thinking within. What they do in terms of mindfulness or whatever, some versions at least, is they sit there, you know, they sit, you know, I don't know what you call it, with legs crossed, whatever. They sit and close their eyes. They engage in some breathing. And they, what, do they, what are they told? Empty your mind. Clear your mind of any thoughts whatsoever. Right? That's what a lot of people are, have been instructed to do. Yeah. This is one of the other types of tafakkur which is completely uh, sp- spoken against in the riwayat. It says, look, when you engage in tafakkur, it has to be active. There needs to be something going on. We don't have this idea, at least in riwayat, of emptying your mind. Now, I'm not completely anti, but I'm just saying that that can be an extreme form. And it doesn't seem yeah. like that's been pushed by the Ahlul Bayt. Now, yeah, maybe in terms of somebody going through therapy because they have too many active negative thoughts, that might be helpful. So I don't want to push that aside completely. But I'm just kind of setting up the boundaries here. So at least one way we're saying don't think about the essence of God, don't contemplate and go deep in there, and also don't completely empty your mind. So in now, the in-between is, I think, what you're getting at as well. Look, most of us, because we're going to be at different levels, let's be mm-hmm. honest. Most people, their contemplation is not going to last more than five minutes at most because they don't have a lot of known variables. Now, somebody like you, you're, you're, you're a talib al you're a student. You're, you know, you're, you're a speaker. You do research. So your ability to look at things from different variables and different angles is going to be different than the average person that you're speaking to, right? So uh, another example of this too. So something I wanted to definitely mention tonight, besides things like, you know, analyzing the Quran or analyzing dua, something that I love to do is, you know, watching movies and TV shows, especially like Marvel, DC, superhero stuff, um, Christopher Nolan movies, Tarantino movies, like these things have a lot of deep meaning. 
So somebody yeah. like who's into philosophy or moral philosophy, things like that, you can analyze something like that to you know in a lot of ways. But somebody else who's just watching for explosions in action, they're not going to analyze anything. So it also goes back to the amount of ability that you have to, and not everybody has that deep ability. So I know you're. We're speaking about this fear that somebody's going to get lost. The average person is not going to get lost, right? Aktharahum la ya'lamun. Aktharahum la yatafakkurun. They're not even thinking in the first place according to the Quran. It's so the, we're saying, look, we're trying to... Most people, get... we will not even engage in any of it, let alone too much of it. Asant. Because it's a, yeah, it's a conscious asant. thing. So, like it's, it's an active thing. You have to intend to fakkur to go through it. It doesn't just happen uh, by accident, yeah. you know? Um, I think that's and you're right, there are people who are thing. overthinkers and overanalyzers. Yeah, I agree with that. There are people who are overthinkers and overanalyzers. And that's its yeah. own sort of spiritual issue that needs to be taken care of. But I would say the majority are like that. So when issues come up, naturally, that's why we are pondering and in order to work through ideas or make progress or even growth in general, just, just you know, to, to develop. A sister has made a very nice point, Sister Fatima, which is what if something, does there need to fix something which is not working? For example, she says, do we need to change just for the sake and end up messing up as you don't have the know-how? I think the point she's making quite beautifully is mm. some people are already at a balance already. Why would they go through a period of discomfort to chase something if they could end up ruining the, the peace of mind they already have? No, it's, it's a good question. It's a good point. So yeah. one, we have to remember that, look, tafakkur is obviously something that's been recommended. It's Quranically recommended, like meaning we're, we've been told in San you have to do tafakkur. And again, we're, inshallah, as we go through the points back and forth, we'll talk a little bit more about what that really means and what it looks like. Um, yeah. And the, the whole idea is this, because I guess let me give the point now. So the whole idea of tafakkur and uh, tadabbur, whenever we end up defining that, inshallah, of engaging in whatever that process is, is so that we end up going to the goal, which is tadhakkur, this deep remembrance. Can Meaning you define, every can you single define point, it would be, it would be yeah. helpful if we define them okay. properly now, just yeah. what are we doing? <laughs> tafakkur, tadhakkur, I mean, I was trying to, and then we got, I got stuck in pizza, and then we jumped everywhere, right? <laughs> so, so we said tafakkur, let's go back to that, was taking known variables, looking at it from different angles, and maybe right. coming with a new unknowns or even coming up with conclusions. So that's tafakkur. Mm -hmm. I'd say analyzing um, uh, or critically examining things from a different lens. Then you have uh, tadabbur. Tadabbur from the word dubur, right, which means end or back. So the idea is this is basically, I would say, prediction, or you can even call it debugging, which is basically somebody if they understand the idea of cause and effect, what they're doing is they're taking a question or an issue, a problem they might have, a mas'ala, and they're trying to see, look, if it goes through you know, this way, what's going to be the end result? What's going to be okay. the conclusion and the tija of that? That's tadabur specifically. So, you know, um, uh, right? you have ayat that are talking about like that. Like, why don't they do tadabur on the Quran, on the ayat? So why is it saying that? It's saying, for example, that look, if you know that, for example, Allah is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the only thing that comes from God is uh, mercy, right? Rahmatuhu um, wasa'at uh, kull uh, shay. His mercy encompasses everything. And especially the Arafa, you know, focus on that. That, okay, if everything is God's mercy, and then in my life, I'm going through difficulty, or I didn't get that job, or a loved one passed away, or I have a sickness, or whatever it is, I'm like, okay. Now, I'm like, let's take Allah's mercy to its logical end, that whatever's Absolutely. happening negative in my life has to be His mercy. Now, I have to figure out the in-between of why that's the case. But to double then is grabbing some idea that you know it's there, and then taking it to its logical conclusion and end. Or we know that Allah is just, so I can never see injustice in the wor world. If I mm -hmm. do see injustice, then that has to be a different explanation. It can't be from God, it has to be something else. So these are the ways that you would engage in tadabur. It's taking something different processes. and They're writing different it out. Processes. Yeah. yeah. And, and trying to figure out, okay, you know, cause and effect, what is the final conclusion of that? If I have an issue in my life, okay, um, what's going to be the logical end and conclusion of that if I do this versus that versus that? Like kind of playing out everything there. So that's the dabur. And then the goal of both tafakkur and tadabur is to eventually get to tadhakkur. Tadhakkur literally, literally meaning remembrance and constantly remembering. Mm -hmm. The idea is all of us, we need to remember God. We have forgotten about him, about all of his signs and his love and his mercy and compassion. We need to remember it constantly. If we had that constant remembrance, we would just be expressing and manifesting that love everywhere we went. But the problem is we don't do that. So if we engage in tafakkur properly, if we engage in tadabbur properly, then we're able to now to do tadabbur. Why? Because we have all this information in front of us now. We've gained all these new conclusions about God, about creation, about reality. So that means now, 
I have to just keep remembering that information. At any point, if I forget, then I have to engage in tadhakkur and try to remember what I, I had forgotten. And that could be something simple, like um, some atheist maybe comes and calls into question my belief in my iman. Like, you know, how can you believe in some imaginary fairy, you know, with all these issues going on in the world? Look at these homeless people on the street. How can you believe in this merciful God? So there, I've already done tafakkur. I've already done tadabbur. So now I just do tadabbur. Like, look, I already remember. I know deep down I've already gone through the proofs of God's existence, his, the proof of his mercy. I've read the Quran. I see the examples of the Ahlul Bayt and there. I, I, I'm around mu'minin and ulama who are, express that mercy. I'm just remembering all that and that brings it back to the forefront of my mind and my heart. That's where tadakur, That's where we all want to be. We want all of that Islamic information, all those names of Allah, the Asma al husna to be a part of us and all we have to do is constantly remember them. And the idea, of course, is that we're doing it in every single moment. Moment. But for most of us, it might be we forget, and then we have to remind ourselves constantly. So Laylatul Qadr is one of those best nights, and all these nights of Layal al Qadr, because it's like, look, constantly remember these things if you can. If you didn't remember them, now going back to your original point, here's some du'as for you, so you can remember these ideas. We'll give you all these names of God, thousands of names of God, so that you remember what God is capable of, what He really is, so that you do tafakkur and tadabar on the names, and then... After Laylatul Qadr, now you can do tadhakr and remember those names outside of Laylatul Qadr as well. Is it fair to say that um, um, tafakkur and tadabbur are processes, whereas tadhakr is a state? The highest level of tadhakr is a state, definitely, for the like, warafa and those who have made it to the top, like at the ulama. For most of us, it's also going to be a process too. But okay. it, so it's still, there's an activeness there too, right? Again, like I said, so... Um, you're in a situation, you need to do tadhakur and remind yourself of the very stuff that you just did ghafla of and you had forgotten for a second. But again, so there's opposites we have to keep be aware of too. Tadhakur usually sits opposite of ghafla. Like, you know, I was unaware of something. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot about it. I did nisyan, but now, no, no, it's deep down somewhere in me. I just have to unlock it and remember it. That's if you actually have the information in front of you. The tafakkur process is that, look, there's other stuff I haven't gone through yet. I need to examine things. It's majhul. It's unknown to me. I have to actually go and do some research or thinking. And tadabur right. is the same way. I actually haven't thought about it. Now, again, some urafah may say, and some philosophers would say, actually, in reality, everything is, in, is within us. This is where it gets controversial, right? Like, everything's actually there. So, in reality, everything is tadabur. The lower levels of it are tafakkur and tadabur. But again, that's, it's, I don't want to say it's semantics because it isn't exactly semantics. But I think for our limited discussion right now, I think I want to set it up so that we're engaging in tafakkur and tadabur as lower level processes. Like, you know, a good mm -hmm. sense of metacognition. But the idea is that once you've done that enough, then tadakur is now your kind of standard operating procedure. Where I have all the known stuff within my soul already there. I just need to recall it if I ever do end up forgetting it. Beautiful, and uh, thanks for not taking it to Wahid al because we'd be somewhere far away, but um, that's, a, that's a very beautiful point. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. makes me think of something else. You know, last time we spoke, we talked about why do we have so many afkar in repetition and sequence and like so many of them. And here's a good answer, because you need to become habitually in the routine of doing tadabbur <laughs> and doing tafakkur to get to that level. That's why we are pushed through these regimes and these processes, you know what I mean? That's yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, it's like anybody else, right? We're whatever in, in something else. Um, I mean, I, I know well, I don't, this is probably not the best example, but in, in certain disciplines um, and certain fields of work, people have to get retrained over and over again, right? Like you, you can't just go right. by your bachelor's or master's. Or, like you have to constantly research. I mean, look at the maraja themselves or anybody who's still in the hausa. The idea is they're constantly keeping up with their, their research. They're constantly going back to even older books to make sure they're on top of everything. And you and know, revising somebody like me, sometimes, like they have to, asant, you know? asant, and that's what happens, right? Somebody like me is a little different. Like I, I, what I revise is going back to anime that I've missed out on before or like, you know, <laughs> I, I missed out on that specific dialogue from that movie. So I have to go watch that movie or that cartoon again. Again, so that I remember that specific line. Shout out to to Jafar from from Jersey, my Jersey crew. Salam alaikum to you, Jafar and your family. Alaikum salam. Sorry, I'm, I'm like, and I think I saw Sheikh Amin as well, secretly joining there. So, so, so yeah, well, Sheikh Amin, I everyone. saw too, but let's not, you know, let's not expose his um his identity. You know, he he, he moves in mysterious ways. So salam to any <laughs> shiuch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and, and also, by the way, guys, if you have any, this is, like, this is probably the perfect time to bring in your reflections and thoughts about the topic. Those of you who are following along, so let us know what you think about um, um, about this point of actively pondering, you know, and 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 making a part of your day. We got Jersey, okay, representing Jersey. This is kind of like See? Jersey meets South London. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, man, we're going to get into a stabbing match now. I don't want to bring no East Coast, West Coast beef or nothing. So all I'll say is all South, <laughs> North, East, none, none of that stuff. The <laughs> monthly effects podcast. I mean, as long everyone. as you understand, as long as you understand that we have the real pizza, whatever you guys have, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what's going on over there, man. I'm not going to go there. Like, pizza's not, I mean, we've, our pizza's American pizza. Honestly, it's not even Italian pizza. So I'm not going to, you know, it's a knuckle of a knuckle. You're, you're you know very, I mean? hu- it's good. <laughs> You're 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 humble. You're you're knowledgeable. This is a known variable to you. Don't tafakkur and tadabbur. So you know, I, I'm I'm very proud of you, Hassan. Mashallah. I've also thought that if I speak about foods, then I can beat you on biryani. I don't need to win on pizza. I can, you know, I can. Um, <laughs> there are other things I can. <laughs> but why are you talking? So I mean, are you doing that to trigger me because of my my <laughs> keto paleo low carb behavior? Is that why you're doing this? Partly that, and partly because I'm Hyderabadi originally. So it's a bit of both. You know, it's just yeah. uh, to really stick it oh to my you. God. I mean. Um, I- I married into Heather Abadi, so I get it. But I mean, fine, that's okay, man. You Whatever. did, mash- mash- We're not going to get in there. You, you joined, you joined yeah. the good side. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Listen, I want to go back to one example, if you don't mind. Since we mentioned pizza before, I have to go back to one example, actually. Go ahead, Sayyid. So, you know, we, usually when we're thinking about tafakkur and tadabur and all that stuff, like contemplation, analyzing, all that, we're thinking about, again, like deep within me um, or signs of the Quran, all that stuff. Yeah, that's cool. We got it. So cool. I want to talk about Pizza. I go back to that. Why? Because when we have, all of us have questions every day of like moral, ethical, like issues. Like we don't know what to do. Sometimes we just go with our gut reaction where, look, if you're an Arif or an Arifa, that's great. Your gut reaction, you know, God will inspire you. Most of us, you know, not like that. We have to do a little bit of, you know, thinking, really ponder about this stuff. So I want to give a very mundane example to show us how this actually can work out. Um, so again, let's imagine you and I were all together somewhere. Um, we're having pizza, right? So now we're sitting down at the center or your house, whatever. We have whatever, extra large pie. We open the pie. So now there's multiple different slices, right? Now you so, tell me, Abbas, what's your first move? What's your first move? Multiple, one pie with multiple flavors or multiple pies? Because it makes so, a big difference. No, no. So it's, it's one. <laughs> let's just keep it easy, right? It's, let's, let's say one halal pepperoni big pie right now, right? Yeah. Um, and there is like maybe like 10 guys in the, in the room. Uh, we're, sure. you know, it's, it's, all of us together, 10 people. So what's your, what's your go-to move now? What's the first thing you would do? Try to break it down for me. I, I'm going to ask for ketchup for, just to have okay. it ready. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm ready to hang up right now. Are you serious? <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Ketchup? Um, although I, no, no, oh, I'm, I'm joking, God. man. I'm joking. Although I, for the crust, oh. you know, you need to add a bit of flavor. No, no, oh. I would, I, we, 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 taksim, we distribute it among the guys. We, we give everyone a, a piece and then we get eating ourselves. That's how we do it. Awesome. And Jaffer's helping out too. So we got, we're splitting the pie. All right. So we got 10 people, 10 slices, right? How do you Perfect. distribute? How do you well, distribute? If they're, ev- if they're even, we distribute evenly and maybe we, we give it in order of some sort of hierarchy of who's senior among us to get the first piece. But everyone gets an equal share because an equal number, equal people. Okay. So right there, I'd say my tafakkur would be different. So if I'm sitting with the same pie, then I'd be thinking, okay, we've got 10 people, definitely. But now there's other variables. Again, this is the, so, yeah, thank you, Jaffer. So let's talk for all the ketchup. So it was a joke, I hope. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, maybe that, that's probably because their they're pizza there is disgusting. I think that's why they're saying that. But <laughs> anyway, we're going to get sidetracked there. Oh, man. Okay. So we've got 10 people there, sure. But now we've got people who, let's say, are hungrier than other people. Should they deserve the slices before everybody else? Then you might say, mm-hmm. look, let's say we have some ulama there. Like, we, let's say we're chilling with, um, um, let's say Sheikh Javad is there, Shumali. maybe Sheikh Hassan Roshandil is there. Obviously, you're there. You're, you know, a, a great ulama, high esteemed scholar. So we have to figure out, okay, well, this, who's going to start the shipping? This is definitely hypothetical. Like, <laughs> for example, well, if I come, I want everybody in the same room, right? That's the idea. So yeah, we'll now we have to think, okay, who, who are you going to give it to first? It's impossible to, you know, it's not like, um, like, uh, like a drug deal, like same time. It, that's not going to happen, right? It's, you can't give everybody the, pie, the pizza at the same time. It's sure. going to be, you said there's a hierarchy. Like, okay, well, we have m- multiple ulama there. Okay, well, which alam do you give to first if that's the thing? And they're going to start rejecting and say, no, no, you give to the brothers first. Then you have other people, let's say, who are starving, and they've been saying that. So a person has to think, okay, should they, go to, should they get it first because they've been asking for it? But then at the same time, you're also thinking too, well, if I give it to this brother who's been who's, – well, I know he's starving, but I give it to him. Mm-hmm. Do I give it to him? Is that going to embarrass him because everybody knows he's starving, and now he's going to feel bad because the other ulama not getting it first? That's another variable you have to consider. It's a fair and beyond yeah, that, so this, so this is just, this is just distribution in terms of who gets it first. Now we go beyond that. Obviously, no pie is ever equal, right? Meaning all the slices there are going to be different. 
let's just say that there's halal pepperoni on there too. Number one, you're thinking about different um, sizes of the slices. They're not going to be equal slices. What slice are you going to give to this first brother? Are you going to give him a big one or a small one? Maybe he's starving, but maybe he doesn't have a big appetite. You have to adjust for that. Um, there's types of ways that the slices are too. Maybe there's like, you know, the type of slices where you have those bubbles on them. You have to figure out, okay, mm-hmm. does this guy like bubbles or not? So what I'm saying is, look, even in something yeah. mundane like this, somebody who really has engaged in tafakkur and tadabbur, they, could, they should be able to engage in all that contemplation instantly. And if mm. they haven't, they need to think about that because these are actual, I mean, it sounds like, you know, stupid, but these are moral ethical questions because you want to be able to give everybody what they deserve. And this is, again, just to give out pizza. And this is because, why? Because somebody, if they're trying to manifest God's names, obviously, when we're thinking about that, we're taking it to the logical conclusion. God gives everybody better than they deserve, right? At the very least, what they deserve, but with the rahmah, better than they deserve. And he has to give them whatever they need in order for them to attain their perfection. We all, we all mm-hmm. want to be insan kamil, right? So I, if I am trying to manifest those same names of God, if I want to be insan kamil, I have to be able to do that even if I'm just going to distribute pizza. Something uh, simple as that. Okay, yeah, I get you. I get you. So I need to contemplate on a particular name of God in every variable that I can to get to the heart of it. <laughs> Something. I hear you. So this is, right. this is this is this is what the, the ulama are doing, the Urafa. They're remembering Allah constantly, every single name. And in that, every single time I mean, you, you've seen I'm sure you've heard the stories. Even when you see the Urafa, like uh, they say that um, if I'm not mistaken, Alama Hassan Zade Amali Marhum Rahmatullah Alay, Qadda Sallahu Sirru, when he would eat like fruit, like a simple strawberry, he would take forever just to eat it because the whole time he'd be remembering Allah, like every bite, he'd be thinking about like I mean, just think about a strawberry. A strawberry is one of the only fruits where the, we're eating because all the seeds are on the outside, right? Like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? All the seeds are there mm-hmm. on the outside. That's a, it's, 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 not, it's an abnormal fruit. And it's very interesting, right? Because the, the shape of it is different than other types of fruit. The, the way that the stem is. All these different things are being considered. He's sitting there, like, remembering Allah. And all of us, we're just trying to get to the, you know, the slice of pizza as quick as we can and get it over with. For them, even mm-hmm. something like eating is, is you know, uh, a, a divine I'll give action. you an example from, from tonight. Ali ibn Abi Talib looks at a plate of food on his last night and says, why would you give me three separate pieces of food? Like, why would you do that to me as your father? I don't look at the word like that. He looks at food as an example of the names of God. Like, you know, it's a whole next level of, 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 of being present, yeah. really is. I mean, you, you had to do it. You had to bring in Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And the other part, which yes, I think yes. is, uh, especially on these nights, is, is, is good to remember of him as well, is they say the last few nights, because he knew his death was coming soon, his shahada was coming, they say yeah. that whenever he'd be served food uh, for iftar, he would have maybe three bites max. And wow. right, in some riwayat that says that. And of course, the people who are hosting him, whatever family he was with, they say, you know, eat, you know, as typical happens in anybody when they're hosting, like, you know, eat more. What are you doing? He said, how can right. I, I'm getting ready to meet my, my Lord, my Rabb. I can't come to him with a full stomach. I want to come to him hungry. And again, I know there's wow. people, you know, uh, at the centers right now on Laylatul Qadr. And in this whole night of Ramadan, I mean, it's the cliche sort of joke that you and I are used to that, oh, Ramadan, we're supposed to lose weight. We're not supposed to eat much. And iftar, we go crazy. Yeah. And, you know, you know me, I'm a, big, I'm a big advocate for healthy eating, especially in Ramadan where we have a really good habit of not just spiritual perfection, but at the very least physical perfection. We can actually help our minds and our bodies out a lot in this holy month. And all of us who are crying mm-hmm. and, you know, in this shahada of Amir al I'm like, look, if you want to live his life, Okay, well, I'm not saying die in your sujood. Obviously, most of us will never get to that sort of level. I'm not saying go out and fight like him, like, like, like Haider in battle. We're not going to get that. Most of us won't get that uh, opportunity. At the very least, eat like Haider, right? I'm not saying, you know, live and die like Ali like that. I'm saying eat like him on the nights when he knew he was going to pass. And this month of Ramadan where any of us could lose, lose our lives, try to, you know, very, at least when you break your fast, make it simple. You know, have some water, you know, warm water is a recommendation, a little bit of salt and a date. Break your fast like that. And if you can, at least pray your maghrib and isha first and then, you know, have that small amount. And then maybe like an hour later, have a bigger meal then, right? Try at least to manifest these qualities of Amir al if we can. I mean, especially on, you know, a night like this when we're really trying to remember his shahada. I think that's like very yeah. practical stuff that I think we, we toss aside. I would add sleep like him. I mean, on the last night, they say that he doesn't sleep mm. that many hours. In his, you know, he wakes up and goes back to bed and, and recites strange mystical poetry, looking at the stars and prays salat and... And he almost seems restless on that day. Night of our mal come. Mm. Why don't I have that same feeling? Well, let me stay awake and see what this night can give me. Who knows if it's my last night? Let me try and have the night of Ali bin Abi Talib. Like, I think the point you're making quite beautifully is every moment has the potential to be something transformative. 
but we have to really intend to sit with that moment and 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 give it the honor it deserves i think um and that's what I take from that point. There's a question here, and I just think, because we're coming to the end, guys, send in your questions and thoughts, sure. definitely. It's a private question, so I'll read it out. Um, sure. This thing, I'm just wondering on the verse, which says, Allah, guys, Allah, Allah, yasha, basically. So where does yeah. this, um, this of Allah come into the equation? Basically, I think the question is saying, if we have this on one side, let's not go to Qadha Qadha for the moment, but if we have on the one side, sure. God, guys, whom he wants, what role does reflection and pondering play in Allah guiding us towards him? That, that's a, way, a better way of phrasing it. Yeah. So we'll just stick with... So number one, first of all, those translations obviously are not helping anybody, right? Allah guides whom he wills and misguide whom he wills. So yeah. the way that most ulama are saying that we should... Mufassirin are saying, look, the way that we should be thinking about these verses is that Allah guides and gives hidayah to whoever wants hidayah and will exactly. misguide whoever wants misguidance. So somebody who's actively, truly, sincerely, with real ikhlas, is actually going, looking and searching for Allah, then they are, you know, engaging in this contemplation. That Allah saying, "Look, you, I, you know, we know the the sort of the, the the cliche lines, right? That Allah saying, "Look, that means intellectually, spiritually, you're taking a step towards me. So then I'm I'm going to run towards you then." So. Yes, mm. maybe our, into, our initial tafakkur and into contemplation and analysis is going to be very simplistic. No problem. God says, look, I'm going to fill in all those other bl blanks for you. No problem, right? You fill in one variable. One, fill in one blank. I'm going to take care of everything else for you. No problem, right? Beautiful. It's almost like, um, especially if we're in the month of Ramadan, God saying, you know, he, we're, we're his guest, right? He's the one who's hosting this banquet. So God saying, look, this whole feast is for you. But maybe he's like, look, all I need you to do is cover the tip, right? Just pay, take care mm. of the tip. Pay the, the take care of the. I don't know what you guys do in the UK, but at least we're forced to kind of do that, and that's the akhlaq in America, unfortunately. We is, tip out of social tip? awkwardness. We tip too, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so it's the same, unfortunately. Yeah, I wish we get, got rid of that, but anyway, like, so God said, look, you just do very, do very minimal. Why right? you throw in a few bucks? Just do that, and then I'll take care of the major stuff. That's all you have to worry about. So the fuck is look. Yeah. Even right now is just thinking about engaging in tafakkur right now. If you do this on a night like this for our a'mal tonight on the 21st of Ramadan, it's like, okay, God, I know that that's something I don't really, I haven't done before. I, I want to maybe just put my phone on do not disturb for at least five minutes or something. Let me put it aside, not look at the screen or whatever, put it aside. And let me just see what I can accomplish. I mean, I guarantee you, anybody who tries it, something is just going to flood your heart and your soul. And you're like, I've never even felt a surge like this before because we know the power of wow. nights like this. So I'd say just try to do something like that and just see what comes out of it and inshallah i guarantee you. and if anybody doesn't say it come back to me i'm like look man uh, i i i don't think it's anybody's going to do that but i'm like that guarantee is given by allah not by me so you can come and complain to me if you see otherwise i thought you were going to do an better line do la'na of me if it doesn't work out i thought you're so close to <laughs> no don't like do la'na of me man i'm already my own as it is i don't i can't i, no. I don't i don't have the space for extra la'na right now man no no inshallah only love that's a, that is such a beautiful um, word of encouragement for someone who wants to get the most of these nights. I'm glad whoever's listening, either live or later on, that they heard it in the nights of Qadr. Like, it's just, it's just like, make that time in your night and just let Allah fill it with whatever He wants to fill it with. But something will come. All you've got to do is make that time. It could just be managing a place or a literally a time in your schedule or uh, uh, taking a few minutes from your routine. And whatever comes from it, comes from it. And, and just let yourself have that. I think that's um, a really beautiful point. Yeah. Definitely. And, you know, it doesn't yeah. have to be this direct one, too. So the, what we call the sort of rel religious direct one is like, okay, again, think about the creation of Allah, look out at the world, look at the beauty, the no, stars, the moon, No, it's just sitting moon, with yourself, literally. It's just sitting with yourself. That's all we're advocating for, honestly. You know? So, like I'm saying, like, there's, there's basically, there's a few different versions. There's the sort of direct versions, which is meaning, like, du'as, Quran, like, that's great. You have creation, that's also good, too. There's internally, looking in yourself, that's also a good one we need to do. Like, thinking about my own self, like, am I really being sincere? Am I, re people say, you know, I'm trying, you know, people say this all the time. I'm trying my best. Like, look, be honest with yourself. Are you actually trying your best? I don't think anybody who's really being honest, like, self-honesty is very difficult. You know, Aytul, as you mentioned Aytul Bahjat, I'll give you the advice that he gave to, um, very famous advice, Rahmatullah Alayh. He said, look, everybody else outside of you, you give them husnudhan and benefit of the doubt. Think that they're doing their best. For your own self, you do the opposite, su'udhan. You always make sure you're harsh with yourself. Like, no, I'm not doing enough. So that's the internal. But I'd say even for the mundane dunyawi actions, even there we can insert a little bit of contemplation into fun. Right? That's what I mean. Like, so I mentioned like Marvel DC stuff before. Like, even if, let's say... You can't stay up all night and do du'as all night. 
I can't do it. Maybe you can do that, boss. But other people, I, it's going to be difficult. So look, let's say you're in your downtime, you're scrolling social media, you're watching, you're looking at some memes, or you're watching a movie, whatever it is. Even there, why don't you turn it into a divine action? Like you're, let's mm -hmm. say you're about to watch a movie, you're about to watch a TV show, you're uh, again scrolling through whatever. Start off with like a Bismillah. Maybe Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, maybe even a salawat, which might sound strange, but like just do that. So at least your mind is now a bit more divinely connected. And then do what you're doing normally. And then where you feel you need to stop and reflect even on those things, like, okay, let's stop and think about that. Um, you know, like I was with some brothers the other day and we were thinking, we were comparing and contrasting just the character development arc of Tony Stark and Steve Rogers, right? Meaning Iron Man and Captain America. And then mm -hmm. comparing and contrasting to uh, Batman, like they are completely different arcs. And that, you know, all this stuff is about character development and stories of the soul and things like that. Like all of these things, you know, they have an effect too. like, OK, these individuals, they had a growth in their life. How does that inform the growth that I may have in my life as well? Right. Outside of the superpower part, like uh, whatever, uh, or the, you know, technology, just the thinking about somebody making these, you know, changes or sacrifices in their life. Like it's something that even with movies and TV shows, you can actually do that. I'm not encouraging to. Um, to you know, go out and watch all this stuff. If you do it, I'm yeah, saying make it a part of your life. Right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, look, if you're ready uh, for the the movie the movie tafsir sessions, then I can, you know, you know me, I'm down for that anytime. Yeah, you're you're the expert in in uh, although I you know I can hold my own for some. Oh, oh inshallah, definitely. we'll see about that. Okay, <laughs> Hassan, I'm looking forward to sitting down and discussing. Inshallah, um, what I what I would like to conclude from that point, and actually for the podcast because we're coming to the end, is to seek meaning in literally everywhere or anywhere and, and, and go through those processes that you've given to actually find that meaning and not just touch the surface, but to go deeper. But interestingly, in Shah Ramadan, even if you just touch, touch the surface, Allah will give you so much more, which is his promise. Awesome. So um, awesome. we're in the best possible time now to try this, really. And then after Shah Ramadan, we kind of you know, continue with, uh, with that habit of, of, of deep thinking. Um, it's a terminology issue, really, to describe this thing. It's a feeling we all know, to take it more seriously, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, we are coming to the end. So, And those of you listening, thank you so much for your questions and your thoughts. I know you mentioned the question, but inshallah, we can, we've already touched it and we can touch on it later. Um, Said Hassan, what would be your last words to those people going into A'mal or have just finished A'mal? How can we apply this to the A'mal? And by the way, you have two minutes before this cuts off automatically. How would you end for us? Yeah, Allah. So I, I think one person even asked the question about like, how do you make sure you're not too self-critical? Like, look, when we remember the major principle is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah is telling Allah. us 113 at 140 times that look, these are the names of mine you remember. Even when we're talking about Joshua and all these things, it's, it's my mercy that you have to remember constantly. That yes, when we are critical of ourselves and we're remembering like, I have, I, you know, there's so much better I can do, God. Like, look, he's kept you alive this long and he's made you reflect so that you can improve. So that's actually, a, being critical is actually a positive achievement that Allah, and, and this propensity for growth that Allah is showing you that, look, you actually can achieve more. You are one of my best servants, and I'm showing you that case. So on these nights, the, the Qadr, as people are saying, it's about yeah. self-measuring and saying, look, you are much are capable of much, much more than you think. And these nights are proving it to you. You can stay up. You don't have to eat that much. You're, you don't need this caffeine. Well, maybe some of us need the caffeine. I, actually, I think I do. I haven't had caffeine too much now, but most of us need it. But we can strive to be so much more. And if you can do it in this month, then watch what happens on Eid when fasting is haram. Then you can see what you're truly made of. And if you can carry on afterwards. Wow. Ahsan said that beautiful. We encourage everyone to follow the advice and to do, you know, pray for us as well, inshallah. And really to spend these nights to find out to take as much as God wants to give you for these nights. We hope everyone collects provision in abundance, inshallah. Um, thank you, Sayyid Hassan, for coming on the podcast tonight. It was exactly what we needed in the nights of Qadr. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go and eat now. And inshallah, best of luck for you to get until iftar, inshallah. <laughs> and, um, inshallah. Jazakallah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much for coming so much. and time for the podcast. On the nights of Qadr, may Allah accept all of your amal. Please keep us, me, specifically in your du'as if you can. Uh, my family and yeah, uh, our teachers and everybody in the ulama and all those who are struggling overseas obviously keep everybody and we're praying for your communities as well and hopefully we all get to see each other and have these kind of discussions in person one day inshallah so we pray for all of us and also pray for the listeners and those of you tuned in you're all in our du'as inshallah and pray for us too inshallah um, that's it thank you guys thank you Sayyidina take care inshallah inshallah ma'asalam ma'asalam fi amanillah hayakumullah ma'asalam ma'asalam habibi